8.30 a.m. Saturday, South Yorkshire's helicopter base. It's going to be a long day, and already some of 99's crew are on a mission. Uh, large wheels, big suspect. Bacon butties. Meanwhile, Captain Mal Reeves is making sure 99 is up to scratch. He's very high maintenance, the pilot. Decaf coffee. One swing there, white. Stood clockwise. Hey, it's a bit of personal pride in the machine keeping it clean, but there's also an aspect of um, aircraft husbandry. You do get attached to them, it's like, like, like your car, you know, you do actually get used to, uh, to flying them and looking after them and making sure it's in good order. Always oh, port fishing for speaking. The first call of the day. Access control, do we have any traffic mobiles free, please, for a report of a stolen Vauxhall Corsa near to Woollywood Bottom, at knowledge. Traffic cops near 99's base are looking for a distinctive purple Vauxhall, which has been involved in an off-licence break-in. We decided that rather than wait until somebody else spotted it, we might as well go proactive and actually see if we could identify it. Being purple, it was quite noticeable from the air. Yeah, Roger, currently uh, Willywood Bottom, and uh, we're looking. Here. Oh. You could just ask me if it is the distinctive purple or sort of the dark blue. Yeah, last officer from uh, Sierra and Kenno 9. Is it the distinctive purple Vauxhall colour? There's a course there to my left. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah the the He's cut the corner. Within minutes, actually, we, we spotted the car being driven. At that time, not particularly violently or aggressively, but because it was a purple Vauxhall, when we checked the registration number with the camera, it was obvious that it was the car. That's it, that's, that's it, got it, well done. Even though there aren't any police cars inside, the crew are convinced the driver of the car is onto them. Just get you a location. Bottom of Bellhouse Road area. No, he's going for his mate. Okay, go for the bit on the driver. The car stopped to collect um, a passenger and the driver was obviously very aware that the helicopter was there because he actually looked up through the windscreen to look at the helicopter or looking at me, looking at him. So although he wasn't being pursued on the ground, he took off and drove rather more aggressively this time, um, obviously trying to make his way to an area that he knew where he could ditch the car. Currently, uh, Willywood Bottom area can get uh, officers travelling, please. The driver is beginning to take bigger risks. Yeah, uh, all officers, Willywood Bottom uh, towards Winkerbank. Cutting corners. Oh, it's RPA. RPA, they're out. Unfortunately, he chose a bad road to turn down and was blocked in by a delivery van parked adjacent to another car. Police car right behind it. Next right, police car. So they ditched the car, jumped out across um, the gardens. The driver's out and running. Driver, driver's all in black. Yeah, I'm with him. Car right behind Being chased by a dog. Good dog. Get him, boy. OK, got the driver. Driver's all in black, still going under the trees. OK, got him. Cross guard. I still got him, you got him. Yeah, I got the house, I've not seen him come out. Oh. I got him around the side of the building. Stay there, Mark. There he is, he's coming out on the front. The driver has stopped jumping and is now strolling. OK, he's in the woods, I've seen him come out, yeah, I'm just watching. I'm watching the path at both ends as best I can, Mark. By that time, there were sufficient police units to virtually cordon off the area. So while we remained in position, we talked to the ground units and told them that we thought the, uh, the criminal was actually down in uh, a wooded area. There's the dog man. Dog man needs to come towards the helicopter. Oh. Tell him he's, he's below where the aircraft's orbiting. Mark, if you can make your way to the trees and uh, start searching there, please. Captain Reeves and his crew are now worried. It doesn't happen often, but it looks like they've lost their man. There's somebody come out. He's, he's there he is. He's rolled his shirt sleeves up. He's got his thing up. That's him. I'm not sure whether that's him or not, to be honest. OK, I'm just going to go around for another look. But he's just come out of the wood line further down. He's far too casual, and he's got his um, jacket under his, under his armour. That guy needs looking at. I don't think that's him. OK, dog man's talking to him now. The pilot was happy that it was one of the same person, the driver and the person in the wooded area. The front seat observer um, wasn't quite so sure. Um, and to be honest, I had been so um, preoccupied with trying to get everybody on the same channel and get people into the area. You know, he was there or thereabouts for me, but I, I couldn't really have said one way or the other at that point. The lad all got out of the, uh, the driver's seat 
I believe, and it's only I believe at this stage, have got darker hair. This lad's hair looks quite light. While the dog handler watches the suspect below, PC Sawsby reviews the evidence above. I'm going to review the tape. Typically, criminals will try and change clothes to try and confuse us. So uh, sometimes we'll review the tape in the aircraft so that we can say, yes, that's definitely is or definitely isn't the uh, the person we're looking for. Right. Uh, so that... We understand some others have gone very dark area, You've got a cap on there. You might have got a cap on. We could see that whilst he, he was in the car and looking up at us, that he'd got something over his head, a hat of some description, that made the top of his head look dark. Um, and then this male who'd uh, emerged from the trees um, had got much lighter hair. Yeah, kind of in his hand. The lad who we've got uh, should smell of uh, alcohol. He appears to have had uh, a kind of or something yeah, in the car. He also had been observed drinking alcohol, and he smelled strongly of intoxicants. Um, as officers were with him. Despite all this, PC Sawsby still isn't 100% sure. I don't think it's him, personally. I know he's come Black out of the right area, but I've also got a very good facial of the kid when he was in the car. PC Sawsby's noticed something he missed earlier. Right, he's got some form of white little team from through his top. What do you think, Mark? By comparing this with the footage of the man as he strolled out of the woods, they should be able to solve the mystery one way or another. That's him, that's him. So until now we've had a, another look, uh, we think uh, it could be. Certain, uh, we can see the white motif on the T-shirt. Kind of the is quite distinctive. Uh, uh, if you say he had a black cap him, as well, then uh, that would finish it off. The dog handler has found a black cap in the lad's pocket. Result, yeah, that's him. We did have a view of the T-shirt, and we'd got a good facial shot of him as well, so there was more than sufficient grounds to suspect that this was the driver. Yeah, Roger, uh, obviously you can uh, retrieve the video from our office uh, at some point. Uh, all officers, thanks for your comms, sir. Can I know? Captain Reeves is especially pleased. All along, he was sure they had their man taken his jacket off and was strolling far too casually with all that activity going along. It's surprising. You can even read body language from, you know, two or three hundred feet up. And as he was approached by the policeman, it was obvious that he was, uh, he was the guy we were looking for. Had that gauntless look on his face, didn't he? <laughs> 99 is running low on fuel, but another emergency call is coming in. Charlie Control, uh, we've got an emphasis. Status 2, please, for an immediate response. Yeah, Sierra 5, just as soon as you've got sufficient to, to warrant us... 99 must refuel the before they can even consider the mission. <laughs> a car's been stolen from the centre of Sheffield by a man on the run from the law. Down in the front. It's clear and normal, 70 on the fuel. Sat, engaged. Meanwhile, Captain Reeves is doing his bit in the kitchen. A rare treat, bread and butter pudding. And of course, in the best tradition for bread and butter pudding, it is best to use slightly stale bread. And as you can see from this loaf here, that's definitely slightly stale, but that won't detract from the, uh, from the flavor of the pudding. You don't often go for the gourmet meals because you can guarantee that the quality of meals is directly proportionate to the number of times you get called just as it's being served. Although, having said that, a couple of the guys are quite good at cooking, and some guys are better at it than others, of course, because they still live at home with their mums and don't know how to cook or use a washing machine or a vacuum cleaner. In Sheffield, the traffic cops have lost the car, a black Mondeo. It is now up to the Sky Cops to find it. I'm just clear of it, see if you see it. Yeah. Down there on the nose, down there. By the time we got there, the car had been parked up and abandoned. The two people, the, the driver and the front seat passenger, had got out of the car. There's no sign of the wanted man or a woman who's said to be with him. Uh, it's, it's back, haven't you? Yeah. It's dead end street. Yeah. Nine, 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 nine. This vehicle's now been parked up. The two occupants are out and walking down a general directly underneath the aircraft. They parked the car up quite tidily, shut the doors and walked away quite calmly. There is a panda not a million miles away. If the uh, panda that can see the aircraft can make itself known to us, please, I'll talk him on. It may well be that they knew the aircraft was there, but didn't know that we'd seen them. 
um, and just trying to sort of blend in with the rest of the people in the area. Wake your way to the uh, wake the ground. They're going to be in the house in a minute. Yeah. He's on his mobile. The man might be phoning a friend. He's got a scanner. More worryingly, his girlfriend has what looks like a police radio. The female was holding something in her hand. It was quite difficult for us to see what it was. Certainly some kind of a police radio type of device. They're uh, heading towards the woods, they man. They're going into the woods. Yeah. Into the woods, mate. They're into the woods. If we can get a car into the area, I'll let them talk as best can. It's just a case of trying to contain the area to prevent them from, from getting out while we then make further arrangements to get other officers and perhaps dog handlers and the likes into the area to try and sort of catch them. No, no, to the officer on foot by the bus stop. If they continued straight ahead, they would come out of the woods in front of you. If you want to stay there, then you can maintain some kind of containment on that side for me until I can get other officers into the area. The woods aren't yet surrounded. There are still ways out. Especially in it, that. Well, two men just about, just, uh, just up there. There were two people there, just came out up on the stairs. Did yeah. they have clothes on? Two girls, is it? Yeah. We need someone on the estate or we'll lose them if we're not careful. We got the officers directed to the sort of normal and sense, common sense escape routes from the woods of paths, roads that went into that area. And then it was a case of sort of directing the dog handler in. So I'll probably go in there. Tell that probably to stop because it's back in the track. Yeah, 99 for the officers walking into the woods. Can you hang off, please? You're ruining the track for the dog. If we put the dog in and we know that nobody else has gone into that area, then if the dog picks a track up, the chances are that it's going to be the track that's been left by, by the offenders. They're nice to get dog in and push them out. They would, wouldn't it? It would be really, really nice. The wanted man isn't taking any chances with police dogs. Oh, fantastic! The dog handlers brought out of the woods are the ones that decamped from the vehicle. Thank you. What is that to his It looks like an old fashioned scanner. The device ultimately turned out to be an old police radio, which wouldn't have been much use. Cool. It's been a good weekend. Back in the kitchen, Captain Reeves' culinary creation is complete. Voila! Very nice, Captain. Oh, I need a ice cream option. So wow. I'll just cut it in half and we'll sort ourselves out. Yes. Roger. Oh, yes. Oh. Hmm. 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 So, yes. yes, it'll do. There's no time for seconds. PC Cook is needed elsewhere and he must look his best. He's got a date in Sheffield at a football match. A big one. Sheffield United's promotion to the Premiership faces its first big test, Liverpool. Sheffield haven't played at this level for many years, and an unprecedented crowd of 40,000 people is expected. I'm quite looking forward to it. I know, I know support uh, Sheffield United or Liverpool, but uh, it's obviously something that um, the Sheffield United supporters will have been looking forward to for uh, a long time, and uh, I would imagine it's going to be uh, a party atmosphere. But even the best planned parties go wrong. If there's trouble today, PC Cook will be at the very heart of it, as the Sky Cop in the stadium's police control room. My role, really, was to liaise between the aircraft and the Silver Commander. On course for kick-off? Yes. OK, sir. To give advice uh, on the deployment of the aircraft and to maintain a link between the two. Control room message. Control room message. Would all turnstiles operators please open their turnstiles? Thank you. 61 inside ground, 67 outside. At 99's base, the crew must wait to be called to the game. It's not PC Cook on the line, but a police station in Rotherham. All right, we got 492. Uh, Romarsh, man with a, uh, a firearm chasing another man. Uh, um, he's got a bar clover on, so it looks like it's a genuine job. Like an eye down to the chair.
At Sheffield United, it's getting tense, and the police commander wants his helicopter. Is the aircraft in the air at the moment? Yeah, they're at a firearms job in Rotherham. In Rotherham? Mm -hmm. Well, if they have the opportunity to overfly the Burn Cross and Chapel Town areas, then that would be a yeah. OK. The Silver Commanders breathe a sigh of relief when the, we know we're overhead because he's got a view of everything that is going off, whether it be inside the ground or outside the ground. Um, and it's the old adage of a picture paints a thousand words. Nine Nine's camera is painting a thousand words over Rotherham. Then we've just pitched up, down links on, we're looking. Uh, certainly looks quiet on Ash. No sign yet of anyone with a shotgun. Uh, there's some more people by a house, two silver cars nose to nose in the right hand corner, mate. Come right. Roger. Come right, stop in the middle there. Yeah, you got any clothing description? Obviously, that's more important to us from up here. Yeah, apparently he's wearing a black Nike t shirt, uh, camouflage trousers, but. Roger, thanks, we'll uh, search on that. Innocent members of the public. Now, 99's crew are under real pressure. They are needed at the football ground. This is a real sentiment to get football. The Liverpool fans have arrived. For the first time, the police have realised they can't get the people into the ground fast enough. Yeah, we're trying to get a message to the referee now to hold everything. Uh, it's a last-minute decision, this, because huge queues have built up outside. PC Cook is also getting worried. No, 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 no. If, uh, if you are available, then uh, we can do with you back. Uh, if you can give us an update, please. Yeah, Roger, that's understood. However, this is a genuine firearms job and we'll stick with him until uh, dictated otherwise, aren't we? PC Cook's big day out is turning sour. Some people near the silver car that the white man has just gone by. That's it, go right, go right, yeah. right through here. Come on, it's not got green combat, Tom. Don't cover that, Tom. Get yourself into the referee and tell him that the kick-off is going to be delayed. No, 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 from 9-8, um, no, no, from 9-8. Pick one now, Steve. If you go left, that's a negative. Uh, we had a quick look at that as we first pitched up. One dog walk is the only person we saw. We're still checking that. 9-9 from 9-8. 9-9 from 9-8. Every time I asked for it, the crew was sort of saying, well, we've got something else. And there is something else. Two o'clock, Steve. Not an armed man, a shotgun, hidden behind a wall, clearly visible from the air. Ah, there it is. With a shotgun found and armed officers at the scene, 9-9 can switch to crowd control at Sheffield United. The airborne, sir. Oh, yeah, the aircraft's there. Airborne. Right. OK, if they give us a situation report when they get over the system. Yeah, yeah. With the kickoff already delayed, it's now a question of when will it be safe to start. We're looking at having 40,000 people rushing to get through turnstiles. There's always a, an element of people who would have left it to the last minute, and there's always the rush through the turnstiles for the kickoff. Nine, nine to nine, eight, start six. This is what the game commander has been waiting for to be able to see exactly what's happening outside. Right, I need to retask the aircraft immediately. I need to retask them with looking at the um, Bramall Lane area, and particularly the two ends of Bramall Lane where those two queues yeah. situated. Nine, nine, no, from 9-8, um, can you possibly put the camera on the uh, entrances Bramall Lane, uh, just so that we can uh, monitor uh, the crowd there, please? Yeah, Roger, uh, will do. We just had them on that, but we'll go around again, no problems. On screen now. That's great. If we, could, if we could maintain that position and maintain that level of view of the crowd, that'd be perfect for me. Thank you. If you could keep a wide view, as you are doing, um, just uh, so we monitor that for the next few minutes, please. But there's more bad news. Another emergency. Excess control, Sierra Yankee 99. I am aware that you are airborne. Would you be in a position to travel to Barnsley, please, for a missing child? Acknowledge. It's the match commander's call. Yeah, from looking at the intelligence, I think the vulnerable missing person probably, you know, there's no contest really, is there? Uh, if the person, missing person is found, though, we need to know ASAP. To make matters worse, the weather's turned nasty. There's quite a lot of water out there. Six. As long as it doesn't come in here, no. I don't care. In the stadium, the match against Liverpool is underway. At last, PC Cook can relax. There's good news too from headquarters. The missing boy has been found. But on the M1, there's a maniac on the loose. 
access to uh, all officers. We've got reports of uh, a male driving erratically on the M1 northbound. Any units that are available to attend. We heard on the radio a pursuit coming up the motorway into our county. Sod's Law were at the furthest point uh, away from the pursuit, so we uh, headed over to try and get on top of this pursuit to, to lend a hand. They'll need more than just a hand. The man driving the car is thought to be under the influence of heroin. Some of the police cars chasing the man aren't from South Yorkshire. He's been on the motorway for 18 miles. Nine, nine, we're overhead now. Downlink, I believe, is on. Uh, for your information, we uh, we do record permanently, so it is on tape. The situation is going from mad to worse, and the crew of 99 are starting to wonder if the man is deliberately trying to cause a crash. I think some of his actions were intentional, um, and I think some of the collisions into civilian cars were intentional as well to try and cause an accident that the police would have to uh, stop and deal with. But I also think a lot of his driving, looking at it, was uh, unintentional, um, just unable to control the vehicle at those speeds in, in his condition. The traffic cops on the motorway have seen enough. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! The plan, with 99's help, is to box the crazy driver in and slow him to a halt. The police call it a tea pack. In a tea pack situation, the aircraft has obviously got a, a long range view of the, the road ahead um, and can, can give advice on to uh, where is the more appropriate places to, to try and stop the vehicle. We just uh, gave our brief bit of input to say that you've got clear gaps ahead. Um, and they then made the move to uh, get vehicles in front of him and slow the, the pursuit down. Slowing the man down isn't going to be easy because his car is starting to disintegrate from the battering it's been taking. Metal from the car has almost penetrated the police car's windscreen. Speeds have now reached more than 100 miles an hour. But, guided by the crew of 99, the T-Pack trap is being sprung. Slowly but surely. But it isn't going to plan. The sideswipe is the final straw. The lead car of the T-Pack uses its brakes to bring the driver to a halt, whatever the damage. Nine, nine, all officers, uh, this male has been detained. The traffic cops are soon able to confirm what they suspected all along. The man is on heroin. When he was standing at the side of the vehicle, he was quite obviously under the influence of something. You ask yourself how they've been capable of even turning the ignition on, getting the keys into the ignition. They've been in such a bad state. They're just uh, an accident waiting to happen. Chase over, 99 now becomes a traffic cop, monitoring the jams that are rapidly building up behind the incident. If you have any situation on, on a motorway uh, at a busy time of day, you get a very, very rapid build-up of traffic. I think it averages about a mile a minute. So as soon as we'd finished there, um, it's a quite urgent job to get the vehicles off the road, get rid of all the debris, and get the traffic flowing again as, as swiftly as possible. Success for the police on the M1 isn't being matched at Sheffield United. Liverpool have just um, got a penalty halfway through the second half and uh, Robbie Fowler's just stepped up and uh, scored the equaliser. 9-9 is just in time. 
for the final whistle. One all with Liverpool for now. Result. <laughs> the question is now, will the fans behave themselves? Can I know if we can just keep uh, looking at the surrounding streets around the uh, stadium. Is uh, very happy with that, please. One all, they'll all be happy anyway. Won't they? Nobody uh, be worried about that one. The crew are right. The draws ensured a peaceful trip home for everyone. We are blades. We are blades. We are, we are blades. But the best result is still on the side of the motorway. One less dangerous driver on South Yorkshire's roads. Obviously, quite clearly in this case, it was drugged up and it was going to continue to drive like that. There's a lot of lot different issues going through your mind when you're following a vehicle like that. You've got to ask yourself, is this too dangerous to continue? If we backed off, would this person continue to drive like that? So it's in our interest to try and get this person stopped before he seriously injures somebody. People are genuinely uh, doing anything in the power to try and get away from being caught. They don't want to go to prison. So when they finally um, get caught, shock sets in, and, uh, and you do have different kind of reactions from drivers. We've had some offenders after a pursuit who've been physically sick in the back of the police car. The dangerous driver got 13 months and was disqualified from driving for a further two years. The car thief who hid in the wood was convicted of dangerous driving and got 12 months. The woman holding the old police scanner was not charged. The teenager who tried to fool the Sky Cops by changing his clothes. That's him, that's him. Uh, we can see the white motif on the t shirt and a black hat as well. Was convicted of stealing and driving under the influence of alcohol. Thank you.